Hey, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Andrew Snorton with Creative Community Solutions. And as you're aware, a lot of times when we do our coverage of different events, whether it's arts and entertainment, sports, community, government, and politics, every once in a while we get a chance to talk with some great people who are doing some great things across the board. And today is no different. So before I have our guests introduce ourselves, as a reminder, the actual written recap for today will be available on our website at asnortoncs.com backslash blog. It will also be posted on our Facebook at Crave Community Solutions, LLC, Instagram, and YouTube at asnortoncs. And it'll also be available on LinkedIn under my name, Andrew Snorton. So I'm just so excited to have two hardworking, dedicated to community, the creative community, the innovative community, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves. <laughs> Go ahead. Really the poet. Hi, um, I'm really the poet. I'm a spoken word activist. Um, I'm a teaching artist. I'm a mom and I'm a lover of all things community. Thanks so much for having me on your show. I'm so excited. And I'm Lady Ursula. I'm founder of Von Trapp Network and our initiative, Artsy Garden Party and others. I'm also a social activist and advocate for youth and um, positive development. So I frame a lot of what I do around that mission. I'm also a poet. Okay, wow, wow. So we have two people with their already creative forces and energies and coming together as part of a larger a piece. Now I'm going to ask you both this before we get into the event. When you think about creatives and you think about poetry and the power of word or how we can extend it in the power of music, what drew you both to using poetry as a vehicle for, let's say, speaking to whether areas of concern to speaking life and anywhere in between? Poetry has always been a vehicle to deliver messages, to uplift, to inspire, to release. I, I, I say yes, as a form of music, as a form of healing, whatever form of expression, expression you choose, but expression, especially poetry for me. Absolutely. Poetry has definitely always been around. Oral tradition is the longest form of being able to retain and share history. Um, and, and spoken word specifically, you know, has been around long before I have. But um, poetry, the written word, both in the spo spoken word was a form of therapy for me when I was growing up. And so it just naturally became a way to connect and share with others who might be having those same struggles or, or need to release need and expression as well. So it kind of evolved for something that I was doing for myself to something that I shared and did with others. Wow, and I'm glad you said that because some people are like poetry and you think sometimes like in school, the whole iambic pen, penameter and the A, B, C, B, and some people look at poetry, quote, as another form of writing, which it is, but you are both showing where it goes deeper than that. For some people, it's that therapeutic or cathartic release. For other people, it's helping find the words to talk to different items. We always talk about there's power in the tongue. In addition to what you both have shared, in regards to poetry and spoken word, what else do you think gives it its power, its energy to where this is truly a great vehicle? I think it's magic. Yes. I think it's it's magic. I think it has the ability to turn around someone's day. Um, I'll give you an example. Lately, I've been feeling a little down. I've been doing poetry for about 10 years. And so I've come to a point in my career that I'm like reevaluating, like, you know, just kind of if I want to keep doing this, if I want to change lanes, like, you know, I'm not rich and then I'm not successful, but I've gotten so much amazing uh, feedback and built so much amazing connections. But 
you know, it's still not paying the bills. So I had to like really reconsider, like, am I going to be pouring so much energy into this craft? But I had a moment with myself, you know, it all begins with self. It all begins with how I feel. And I wrote myself a poem and I shared it with a friend yesterday. Like, Hey, I feel like this might be lacking. You want to like, listen and she's like yeah she listened and afterwards the whole tone the whole conversation changed she was so positive and it was like i infected her with with my healing um the poem is about self-healing and it was kind of a reminder that yeah i want to do poetry i'll probably be doing poetry for the rest of my life it's not about the money it's about the wealth and it's about the the energy that it gives me and that i'm able to share with others as i said so i feel like poetry just it just has the ability to infect others with that magic. You can make people feel how you want them to feel when they hear your words. And that's why I think poetry is so powerful and why it's my vehicle of choice, you know, to, to carry me on this mission. I agree, it's magic. And um, <clears throat> it has the power to infect, captivate, put someone under your spell. However, for me, the magic comes from the source. Um, I put it in a song, but I was literally praying one night and I was told to get up and to write. And what I wrote was poetry. And from then on, I was writing poetry. I was hearing from, you know, my, my higher self and the spirit guide to walk with me. And they're pushing this for me, you know, giving me a tool to use, to not just heal myself and others and send messages, but to connect with that part of me that would otherwise possibly be ignored. You know, so I think that's where that healing comes from when you're able to connect with yourself and your source with something like that, that's powerful. It's powerful. And not everyone is equipped with the ability to do that, to connect, to, to write, to write well. And I get that a lot. I wish I could do that. How do you do that? I wanna do that, I'm gonna take a class. You know, however, it's, um, it goes a lot deeper than just um, talent and creativity when you want to look at the power, especially when you consider the source. Like it's powerful to say, I'm gonna tap into poetry to, to treat myself therapeutically in this form of art. You know, it's powerful to say, I'm gonna use poetry to connect with others or, you know, yourself. Wow, and I'm so glad you broke that down because like you said, it's not only just connecting with community, but like you said before, it's almost reconnecting with who you are and whose you are. And those are such positive and powerful forces. And in sharing that and wetting people's appetite, we know this coming Sunday, April 10th, is going to be a way for people to feel and be a part of this creative energy, synergy, power, release, reconnection. So walk through with us this coming Sunday, a way for all to draw these same types of takeaways and even more. Well, you'll come and hear poetry if, if you're into that. Uh, you'll also have an opportunity to, are we still here? You also have an opportunity to connect with community and yourself through um, artistic expressions such as painting. There'll be a lot of art where and art stations where you can um, create create garden garden signs with positive affirmations. There'll be vegan and plant based soul foods that you can partake in, and a lot of kid vendors where you can network and see their art and how they express themselves. There'll be breathing and sound therapy. Just We're just relaxing in a garden. And, and even if you like to use the earth itself to ground and align yourself and get release and therapy, there'll be gardening a workshop where you can learn how to grow your own, start your own plant beds at home. Wow. So in other words, it's more than just like you said, you'll have the poetry component, music component, but it's almost, for lack of a better term, really reinvigorating through as much of an organic experience as possible. Like you just said, food-wise, plant-based or vegan-based or how gardening, not only through that lens of health, but 
there are elements of creativity. There's, there are elements of reconnection and, or how I like to sl- say you're slowing down the moving parts and just seeing things a little bit more clearly. And you also said before with incorporating youth is quote, and then an opportunity for them to engage a lot sooner because some of us are finding out about stuff is like oh why am i finding this out later so you know later in life let's go ahead and see what we can do early and and for like return build positive habits and constructive habits um location because i know we have this coming sunday provide the time and location as well as the name of the event so people can not only mark it on their calendars but go ahead and share accordingly because somebody out there knows people that can benefit from what's taking place this sunday yes so it's going to be this sunday as you mentioned april 10th artsy garden party beginning at 1 p.m at, in the park view community garden it's in decal memorial park if y'all get off of the 20 and Glenwood Avenue, it's right there. You just make that left at the gas station. Okay, so like you said, the location where the um, garden party is, like you said, at DeKalb Memorial Park, and it's literally right off the exit interchange for Interstate 20 and Glenwood. Now, right. let me... Avenue. And it's in okay. the community garden is called Park View Community Garden. Okay, Park View Community Garden, great. Now, in regards to Sunday, are there still, I'll say, vendor opportunities? Um, and if not, can people just, like I said, just come out and be a part of that? So we have a lot of vendors. We have a lot of vendors. We have a lot of youth vendors, such as um, Naturally Bree. We have Cooking with Joya. We have Magical Planet, all young women. Um, I believe we have some young males coming out as well. So we have a lot of vendors, but I think we have room for one or two more. So um, if you are interested, you can either contact myself, Relly the Poet, um, via Instagram or Facebook. If you just type in R-E-L-L-E, the poet, I would definitely come up on Google and various platforms. Or you can contact Lady Ursula. Um, LadyX.com is the website in which there is some contact information there as well. So check us out on either of those platforms if you are interested in, in being a vendor for the Arts of Artsy Garden Party this Sunday. We're mostly interested in having um, our tribe and community come out and support these young vendors, you know, to let them feel that support and know, you know, that they're not doing this in vain. They're not growing their own foods because we can look at the economic standpoint, food prices are rising, but it's it's self-sustainability as well. And it's um, healing through that connection with community. So we really want people to just come out and be involved. There'll also be um, a licensed therapist there just chatting if a family just wants to talk if kids just want to express themselves for a moment safely so we just we're also providing that type of safe space well i tell you what when you think about through like you shared your respective journeys with poetry and spoken word and the themes of you know discovery rediscovery uh affirmations healing, the organic theme, um, the education themes, the empowerment themes. There's so many positives that are intersecting this coming Sunday at 1 p.m. If for no other reason beyond what's been shared, because there's already so many positives, let, let me ask you this. For this event, do you see this as a standalone event, meaning it will just be done in April, or do you feel like you may evolve this into a series where it allows multiple opportunities for all, you know, all these positive intersections to come together? I tell you what, uh, this little girl on the screen right here is my daughter. She'll be one of the vendors. And she and I and the rest of our family and some friends, we started this in 2017. 
and we've been connecting with uh, different communities via rebuilding and revitalizing community gardens and then throwing an artsy garden party, just a meet and greet. So it's definitely a series. We're going to keep on as long as we're able to. We're going to take it outside of Atlanta. My grandfather left us some land and we're rebuilding that to create a garden plot to have garden parties and then connect with that community and further it. Like we're going to New York. We have other events that uh, Riley and I do together, like Mommy and Me. And we're doing that in New York this May the 7th. May 7th, that's right. Saturday. So we're gonna definitely scout and check out some gardens. I've already started. So it's a series, there's more to come. Wow, and I'm so glad you shared that. So for some people where this is the first time that they are finding out about this. And like I like to say, even if it's your first time hearing about something or connecting with people, don't let it be the last because there are some great things going on. So as we get ready to wind down, again, for our audience, remind the date, the time, the location, where they can get more information. Sunday, April 10th. At 1 p.m., 1 to 5 p.m., we'll be in Parkview Community Garden. That's 353 Wilkinson Drive, Atlanta, 30317. And it's the Artsy Garden Party. You can find out more information on our nonprofit's website, completeoutreach.org, on our Facebook and Instagram page. It's Artsy Garden 8, excuse me, Artsy Garden Party, or Von Trapp Network on Facebook or Instagram. Okay. Well, I tell you what, I thank you both for taking time, not only just to talk with us, but for what you're doing in so many different areas and finding great creative ways for these to overlap and really make a, a, a positive impact, leaving a positive footprint. And like you said before, not just here in Atlanta, but you're already thinking as creators do, wheels are always spinning. Like what can we do slightly differently in a creative manner to have an even bigger impact? So we are definitely grateful and excited. And as a reminder, like I said at the very beginning, for our recap, make sure to visit our website of acenortonccs.com backslash blog. This article will be active on March, I mean, not March, excuse me, April the 8th. You may also catch it on our Facebook at Creative Community Solutions, Instagram and Twitter at acenortonccs. The video that you're seeing here, you will find it on our YouTube channel of Creative Community Solutions. And we'll also have this out on LinkedIn. So as we get ready to close out, as we do with everybody, again, we are so grateful for you taking time. We are grateful for the work that you are doing in so many different areas. We definitely hope not only for this Sunday, but future endeavors, projects that you continue to build, you continue to grow and continue to do the great things that are sincerely needed. And again, for everybody who's taking a part on this, make sure not only to watch, read, but please make sure to share. Don't be greedy. Please make sure to share and definitely make sure to lend support and encouragement. So until next time, everybody take good care and we will see you real soon. So thank you. Thank you. Peace.